Hello and welcome to this Warcraft replay. This is going to be the second game of this best of three here on the map Twisted Meadows. So, yep, WCA 2015 Chinese qualifiers. Uh, as I said in game one, EU has been completed. China's com been completed as well, but there's no VODs out. So I am doing that. Yeah, it's not like I'm hired to do this. I wish I was, but... Uh, I think even if I was hired, I probably can't match the time to do it. Uh, yeah. Plus, uh, the country I live in, it doesn't. It's not really good or well known for its up speed. So there is that. That's why I don't do live streams, honestly. It's because my up speed is so incredibly horrible. As in addition to my download speed as well. Um, that it's almost impossible to do live streaming well, or at least compared to like other people. So in game one, I should have like I was supposed to do some administration stuff, uh, like the 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 overlay has changed. I I redone the overlay a little bit, just slightly, um, to compensate for the undead night elf and orc UI universally. Usually I. The, the the overlay was for the human and I wasn't expecting any other race honestly uh, so yeah that was my mistake also uh, I'm gonna try a little different in terms of the sound setting department here I upped the set uh, the sound a little bit because like compared to like Crota uh, and back to Warcraft my videos are quiet so anyway uh, Romantic spawning in as the grey human player on the top right versus Tara, the purple undead in the bottom left. So, uh, as you can see, Twisted Meadows is a lot uh, better map for a human player, so I'm assuming Romantic was the one that uh, chose this specific map. Uh, yeah, basically if you don't know how uh, the map pool works anyway, is that you can veto, uh, which means like, take out uh, particular maps and then uh, you can just pick off the litter. It's kind of like drafting maybe I don't know I'd, I haven't been in a tournament situation for a very long time uh, yeah so uh, there is that I do remember actually I, do I remember I think I played in a Zotac once or twice and it was something like that I also remember playing a Starcraft 2 but, uh, yeah, neither times were great. So Romantic going for an Archmage first. Uh, he has Robe of Magi, so plus six intelligence there. At Archmage, not really one for, you know, really caring about which items he gets. Uh, in terms of stats-wise, I guess. Uh, intelligence, even though it does up his damage a little bit. Maybe, it, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. He's not that impactful in my opinion. So Tyra going for the standard Death Knight. It does seem like he is going for a bit of skeleton harassment, something he... Uh, I was expecting him to do in game one, but he did not. Early tier two as well. Uh, yeah, just standard across the board for both players. If I took the, took away the nameplates, you would have just guessed any, any like human undead player, honestly because this kind of situation pretty much um, every undead slash human plays like this which is kind of sad in a sense but that's just how the meta has uh, finalized I guess um, yep harassment as expected the death knight would be taking a lot of damage as the archmage tries to shoo him away death coil able to pick up one of those uh, creeps, but not the warrior, which would have probably given him level 2, which will give level 3 to the Archmage instead. Pair up to Vitality is probably a lot more useful than the Rogue Magi would be, because the viability is definitely a bliss here. I sound like an average uh, Path of Exile player, honestly, which I have been spending a lot of time in, in, in the past month. Uh, Definitely, survivability is a lot better than damage, but I guess in Warcraft 3, uh, the Blade Master would think otherwise. Alright, Death Knight, 
Well, probably not going to find too much success on this. Only a couple of skeletons and a single crypt fiend will definitely not, definitely not change things here. Um, of course, as I said in game one, uh, delaying that expand or at least canceling that expand is is a must for an undead. Otherwise, uh, this will not be a fun game for the undead player. Yep, and I, de I definitely can say uh, it probably wasn't fun for Tar in game one because he had to siege for so long, and like it's a very monotonous process, honestly. You just sit there, make sure your units don't die, make sure you deal more damage than the the repair rate can, and yeah, it gets boring. Uh, but I guess the same could be said for Romantic. It's pretty much the same situation here. Lich popping out, probably not the right time. Or maybe uh, it could be the other way around. It, he popped out at the right time. Because apparently he was enough to push away this attack. The elemental's not going to find uh, much success there. Okay, it seems like the... the later tier 3 once again from Tar. Uh, not too sure if he's going to go into meat wagons this time because well commit to last refuge that base is a fair ways away. Archmage is still at level 3. He has boots so can run around a little quickly. It looks like footmen are starting to actually you know build some confidence here not running away by the first sight of that lich and Tara in fact is getting very low on that lich himself able to pick up a health pot but yeah you can't continuously keep uh, use that because it does have a bit of a cooldown and death knight is nowhere near so the lich needs to be a little careful on that department acolytes are being taken out by the footman but the DK re uh, returns with his Crypt Fiends as well, so he'll try kill off these footmen. This is almost typical of a human player. He just sacks uh, all of his footmen just to free up space so he can uh, go into tier 2 uh, production, essentially. Uh, this would have been a lot more ideal if Tara was, you know, fixated on going to tier 3. He definitely can now, uh, so I guess this is almost as good as forcing a cancel on tier 3. It's just delaying tier 3. The only downside is the Death Knight and Lich was able to level up from the, the tribute that uh, Romantic gave to his undead opponent. So blacksmith being rushed here. Not too sure on the rush or speed building of the blacksmith, honestly. Tier 2 is nowhere near, so it's not like you're going to go uh, rifleman quickly, I guess. I mean, Romantic's not even starting rifleman, so not too sure on the rush of the blacksmith. Statues, a lot more of a valuable target than a death knight in this I guess it's not a lot more valuable, it's a lot more realistic, I should say. Definitely the Death Knight is a lot more desirable to take out than the statue, but Death Knight has, is pretty slippery with that TB scroll anyway, so... Yeah, not a chance in that... in that regards, I guess. Lich being on the offensive here, we have double guard towers, so... The triple guard... quadruple guard towers, in fact. So, without me wagons, this assault is pointless. Zeppelin coming out for uh, Romantic. Tara. Oh, this is not looking too good for him. I think this is a very big deal. Um, if he's able to kill one more of those acolytes, then he. He should look good because that either forces Tara to go three acolytes and tier three done 
or he forces that tier 3 and or and forces that tier 3 cancel and then a bad situation with Tara but it seems like Tara is able to uh, live through the storm here I think at this point even if you lose a second acolyte then tier 3 is not a problem but yes very very close on that one so romantic uh, dealing little damage to the altar of darkness it's not like this particular building is as important to the undead arsenal right now um, I think it, although it is pretty important to pick up a third hero it's it's not really that significant to, uh, other than that fact the second hero is going to be a mountain king which I guess it's to be expected um, Yeah, I guess. I mean, not many support heroes coming out for the Archmage uh, that I can imagine. Uh, we did see, like, the Alchemist a couple of times. We've seen uh, the Beastmaster and, of course, the Panda as well. Panda would have been also a pretty nice pick here, but then again, the Panda pretty much has the same fault as the Mountain King, which uh, destroyers pretty much do, like, not worry about that. Death Knight, however, is going to get picked off by a Mountain King Stormbolt, and I don't like this for Tara here. Losing that Death Knight while losing the Altar of Darkness is is all right. It's not that it's not that devastating, but losing the Death Knight and then losing the Altar is devastating, and that is going to be pretty bad for Tara. He is so far behind. Oh, okay, you can just revive it through the tavern anyway, so uh, don't need the Altar of Darkness for that. Actually, I'm wondering if... Because I could have sworn that um, you can't you can't hire uh, heroes without an Altar. I'm not sure about reviving, so that definitely answers that. Uh, Castle Tick coming out for Romantic. That is some... Um, ballsy play here I guess uh, especially since like Tara is now in the front of in front of the door trying to knock it down double workshops here I can't imagine sea tanks but here we go with the Rantic he's going really desperate in this circumstance I probably should have just seen the blacksmith to see what upgrades he was getting so plus two uh, armor upgrades for that uh, for the siege tank I'm pretty sure yeah, yeah. See, looking at this, the siege tanks don't have any weapons upgrades, so they're just going full uh, zero three upgrades for those siege tanks. Uh, Romantic could also potentially uh, lead into knights because they also benefit off the same upgrade. Meat wagon is out, so maybe I'll try and deal with these guard towers here, but I wouldn't hold my breath too much on it. We only have a single meat wagon out, so could be rather difficult we shall see oh triple or workshop I did not see that Pally is coming out as the third hero here so uh, a lot more focus on survivability triple siege engines are moving out so honestly a lot like most players would go usually send two siege engines I don't I don't feel like that's enough I think three is almost a minimum kind of we shall see how effective they will be. Because the meat wagons are here, not not back at base. Meat wagons are very effective against those siege engines because they do deal siege against the uh, tanks fortified, so... Yeah. Oh, nice obsidian statue here. Able to block off all of those siege engines for like two seconds, so... Um, definitely a lot of value there. Maybe I'm not. I'm trying to figure out if that was a joke or not. I guess I could have taken it a lot more seriously. I, I feel like that was a very legitimate um, win there for Tara. All right, siege engines are laying waste to the Black Citadel. Uh, Black Citadel, obviously a tier three building, so it does have a ton of health and a lot of armor. But you're not, you're not human, you don't have fortification armor. 
so uh, not gonna last as long. Plus castle, actually, huh? I, I, it's taken this long to realize, but uh, humans do have a lot more of a tankier, beefier uh, town hall than undeads do. I guess the winning of uh, winning factor for undeads is that it attacks back. But 13 to 15, yeah, not that great. Definitely not going to do much against these siege engines, but it does seem like we have enough acolytes repairing to thwart this siege. Interesting. Uh, the romantic's still going on with those tanks. I know a lot of people hate tanks because it's like the most, one of the boring way to win, or at least boring way to play. I'm not sure if it's cowardice because, like, it's almost like. How should I say? I need, I need a good analogy for this. But, it's almost like you play so horribly. But because you have tanks, you win. It's I don't remember. I think it's like, and it's very hard to actually formulate an analogy off of this. But one zero, uh, one three, coming out very soon for those siege engines. Scout Tower, I'm not sure how successful they're going to be, but I think Tower probably won't continue the siege as uh, when he spots out those second set of tanks. Romantic's even going all in on tanks as he's going for a fourth workshop. He's not even going knights or anything of that sort. No griffin aviaries, no, no rifle casters, we're just going all tanks. This is as old, old Yumiko as you can get. Nowadays, I'm not sure how, how Yumiko plays when it comes to tanks, but yeah, Romantic going for probably another expansion attempt here. I'm very curious to see what item was picked up in the top left. It does seem like it was the Boots of Quathalas, so plus 6 in agility, probably not the most important stat for any of these human heroes here. Alright, Siege Engines once again going at it. All 5 Acolytes are repairing. So eventually Tar will run out of resources, and yeah, it, this is not looking too good. Paladin is very close to level 2, the Mountain King is at level 3, so uh, it doesn't really matter. GG from Tara. Uh, Romantic able to come back and even the series up 1-1, although not the most spectacular way to win this game. Uh, a lot of people do criticize Siege Engines a lot. I am very neutral about it, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed, I'll see you guys again in the third and final game.